Yo, what's going on everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to talk about traditional diets or what people ate before they were influenced by Western foods. And then I'm going to take you on a tour through my kitchen to show you what I eat and some of the sacred foods that I also have in my kitchen that traditional peoples uh, consider to be the most prized foods. You know, when Western Price went around the world and he observed these traditional peoples that weren't influenced by Western foods yet that he noticed that, you know, none of these cultures consume lean meat. Uh, it just wasn't something that was sought after. You know, they would either store it for, um, for later use or they would feed it to dogs. Um, it just wasn't very, con it just wasn't considered prized or sacred like the organ meats or the fats. It just focuses on the most nutrient dense foods and that isn't going to be in lean meat. Not saying I don't eat lean meat, but it's just not like the focus of my diet. It's not the reason why I eat mostly like an animal based diet. I eat mostly an animal based diet because I'm going for the most nutrient dense diet. I quite frequently get asked, you know, what should I be eating on a carnivore diet? Do I eat all meat? Do I eat all fish? Do I eat all chicken? And so what I'm going to do is just go through and show you some of the foods that I really enjoy and kind of explain uh, why I eat them. So when we take a look at traditional cultures or traditional peoples that weren't influenced by Western foods like the, the refined grains and the refined sugars and so these people were getting all of their foods locally and what we typically saw across the entire planet was they ate foods that were rich in fat soluble vitamins, saturated fat, cholesterol, uh, they typically did not focus on high protein diets or high carbohydrate diets unless they were in more of the equatorial zones. But even in the equatorial zones, they still included foods like uh, seafood and other saturated fats. And so I'm going to go through and point out some of the foods that I have here in my kitchen that I can show you. So right here, uh, this is the straight up beef fat from wild like a, a Highland cattle. So I, I think we recently got uh, five kilos of it, so it's about 12 pounds. And what we do is we actually just learned that we can put it through the food processor and use it like butter. So we put it on everything and I like to pretty much include it in everything that I eat. Here we have Highland, or like a veal liver. So, this is considered to be one of the most sacred foods among the entire planet for all the traditional cultures. Uh, this contains pretty much all the fat soluble vitamins. I mean, it contains vitamin C, which is a water soluble vitamin. It's, um, you know, it's extremely, extremely high in vitamin A, but it's definitely considered to be probably one of the most nutrient dense foods. Here we have some raw milk that we just picked up last night from a local farm. We just put it in these bottles. We just put it into a cabinet down here and we're just going to let it sit. Uh, a lot of traditional cultures drink raw fermented milk or just consumed uh, raw fermented dairy products and raw butter. So the, the dairy products were definitely important but they did not consume them any way that we generally find them in the store. They were from animals raised on their natural diet and they were not processed at all. So here we just have some beef, 17% fat. Uh, this isn't particularly special, but it's something I do consume, so I just wanted to include it. It's not the, the bulk of my calories. I would say I'm transitioning to more of fat being the bulk of my calories and it's I'm definitely feeling better than on higher amounts of protein. Over here we've got bone marrow. We get uh, bone marrow once again from these, these highland cattle. And then over here we've got some bone broth brewing. So we have a package of this in here and we're currently making some bone broth. And then over here we've got local pastured eggs. We buy like five of these flats every two weeks. Uh, so we go through quite a few eggs. And then here's the, pretty much the, one of the few fruits that we eat. 
We usually have a couple of these a day. Pretty tasty. Not super special or sacred, but they are a nice treat. I still enjoy those. And then we've got uh, some raw honey. Raw honey is very enjoyable as well. And yeah, guys, that's all I had in my kitchen that I wanted to show you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully this gives you a bit more insight as to some foods you should be including into your diet. Um, uh, you know, salmon's definitely great. Uh, you know, meat's definitely great. Uh, I just don't believe the, the higher amounts of protein are necessary if we're looking at all of these traditional cultures. Uh, say like the cultures that Western Price observed. None of them were focused on high protein foods. None of, the, none of them were, uh, you know, on a plant-based diet. 100% of them did consume animal products.